My name's Leanne Anderson. I'm the Chief Clinical Information Officer at Data Capture Experts. And we provide health software that is a digital clinical platform. And it is a platform, and I call it a platform and not an EMR, really purposefully. EMR really is focused on those inpatient units in hospitals, provides really good clinical information for those. What we do is focus on the stuff that sits around it. So your community-based programs, community nursing, community allied health, mental health services, a lot of the outpatient services in hospitals are usually not covered by their EMR. So our focus has been on all of those systems because that all sits around a hospital, whether it's public or private. And what we usually find in health is that more than half of your patients that you see actually see in an outpatient environment. And it's only when they get really sick, they come into your inpatient environment. But the more we keep patients in the outpatient service, they're at home, they're healthy, they're well, that's sort of the place where we can stop a lot of the admissions, a lot of emergency presentations, unnecessary deterioration. Yeah. If we can look after them while they're in the community. So my focus has always been regional patients anyway, mm. but in particular, keeping people at home because we don't want them in hospital. And if we can provide them with really good digital systems to help keep them in their home, then that sort of helps support those staff to do that. Well, I mean, that's super on point with all the discussions here at HIC and just generally within the um, the the ecosystem in Australia for that point that you touched on, actually, which we'll probably dive into a little bit later around the the uh, regional um, health systems. But it's been a while since we spoke on the podcast last, Leanne, um, and, and a bit of activity since then, no doubt. What, what's, what's been happening in the past kind of 6, 12, I think it's even been more than 12 months. Oh, it's going to be a little bit more. Yeah. So we've done some really cool projects in that time frame. We've done one project with the Loddon Mallee region in Victoria rolling out a remote patient monitoring um, system and, and module. Um, we've rolled out our community health service program in with Austin Health. So they've just gone live in the last few weeks with all of their outpatient or their not admitted patient sort of um, cohort. And they're due to go live with their mental health patients in the next couple of weeks. And then we've also won the state contract with the Victorian government to roll out a statewide mental health platform. Cool. So that's the big project of the year that's taking up lots of time and energy mm-hmm. and um but it's a, really, it, it's a really important project in that it is designed to answer to one of the recommendations from the Royal Commission into Mental Health in Victoria. So it's got a big mandate to it. It's got a very clear goal about what we're trying to achieve, and that is a statewide, complete, end-to-end mental health record for each consumer. And the idea being those consumer records should only need to be held in one place, but consumers should only have to tell their story once as well. And so as they go from service to service or health service to another hospital across the state, they're currently needing to repeat a lot of that story. So the more we can bring that into one system and have that information shared would meet the goals of the Royal Commission recommendation. Yeah. So it's kind of got this really cool technical component to it because technical architecture, not not technical at all, but the architecture is really important to Mm -hmm. make that work really well at a statewide level, but also functionally. We need to make sure it works really well for clinicians across the whole state and in all different mental health services, whether they're acute inpatients, whether they're community mental health patients, residential programs, local mental health services. So it's a um, it's got lots of complexity, but lots of really interesting, cool stuff yeah. to do as well. And I can only imagine, I mean, mental health, obviously such a big issue uh, across the country and globally too, that there have to be a lot of sta- other states watching with interest too at the... Um, like once it's deployed, because it's bound to have an impact. You would think so. You would think so. And, and I think, you know, the Royal Commissions into big things like aged care and mental health have a lot of sway and, and, and really pull attention where it's where it needs to be, quite mm. rightly. But to respond to recommendations from a Royal Commission is, you know, is, is a high priority for government, for sure. the clinicians, for the people who work in those services. Yeah. And we can see that those, those recommendations make sense. So it's yeah, it's a really important thing to keep following through yeah. and and deliver on. Absolutely. Well, that'll be keeping you busy. But the um mm-hmm. uh, also b- busy here at Hick attending sessions and catching up with individuals. And I believe um, uh, there's been some activity up on stages from customer stories. Is that right? Tell me. Yeah, 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 yeah. So we've um we've had Katrina Nee from the Lod Mallee for Bendigo Health in the Lod Mallee um, Health Service region in Victoria come along and prov- and do a presentation. And that presentation was about one of the remote patient monitoring programs that we've rolled out with mm. her. So it's been quite a you know, 12, 18 month long project to sort of build what they need or to, to understand the requirements and build what they need so that we could actually provide remote patient monitoring to patients in that regional part of Victoria. And they're using it mostly for chronic disease management patients. So patients with 
little medical devices in their own homes with an app on their phone. They can take their blood pressure, their temperature, their pulse oximeter, whatever the reading is that they need. Those re- readings then go into the app on their phone and then come through to the clinician portal. And so the clinicians have got a dashboard and they, they can see that dashboard to see each of the patients in their program that are, that are on the remote patient monitoring um, system and they can see whether or not they've got readings that are out of range or whether they've not taken a reading today and they should have taken a reading today. So there's sort of like you know, coloured statuses essentially on a dashboard yeah. to see what's going on with all their patients so they can monitor more people with less staff. Yeah. And it means also those patients don't need to come in to the health service to have, you know, just some obs taken. Yeah. If they were travelling before, so they don't need to do that. But also we don't need to send nurses out to them to take those obs. So either way, we're sort of saving on someone's time, whether it's mm. the patient or the, the nursing staff. And they're also using it for the diabetes in pregnancy patients. So they're using it as well to take their glucose readings however many times a day they need to do that, which is pretty frequent for those yeah. ladies. Um, and so they're monitoring those results through that as well. So that's been a big project, and that's, so that's rolled out across most of the Loddon Mallee region now. Interesting. And I always love the customer stories and the, um, uh, I guess, examples of implementations of technologies because it kind of puts it into perspective and allows, um, I, I guess, you know, in this example, attendees a tick to, um, uh, I guess, be uh, live vicariously through the, the, the whole process of, uh, of a healthcare implementation and execution because it's... Um, you know, it, it is certainly a, a, a journey for any any health system to go through. But where do you find that, um, say, be it attendees at HIC or other health systems, you know, that have these particular needs, where do you think they are on this kind of spectrum of being aware of the need to have the, these kinds of solutions within their particular health setting? Or is it only for particular health settings that have that kind of remote or particular types of healthcare um, services within their region? Like, in terms of that kind of solution from a, from a data capture expert's perspective, what's a really good fit and, like, where is that kind of market at in terms of readiness to, to let's, yeah, let's do and look, this? Yeah. It, it could be useful anyone to, mm. for any health service, really, because if, even if you're metropolitan, you've got a, the burden of a really high population that you're trying to service. So you can't get nurses out to every one of those chronic disease patients because there's just so many, mm. where in the regional areas you've got the burden of travel and distance and so either the patient or the nurse has to travel. So either of those two groups have still got a problem. They're just slightly different <laughs> versions of the same problem, but yeah. one's volume and the other one's distance, yeah. really. So they could all use that kind of work. And anything that, like anything that allows a patient to stay at home that allows them to have some control and some say over their health care and some visibility. It's like there's that transparency that the patient can now see their blood pressure readings each day and they've got the confidence that those readings are going through to the nurse and that the nurse can message them and say, hey, do, can you take that one again? That, that doesn't look quite right. And But they can do that two-way messaging through the app as well. And so they've sort of just got a – I think it's just a bit of reassurance for those patients who are at home – we don't really want them to have to come in and out. So if we can give them both the, the transparency but also the reassurance that someone's there to catch them if, if it does go wrong, yeah. that's got to help them stay a little bit more positive. Yeah. And I think, that, I think that works in every clinical setting. I don't think there's a care setting where that wouldn't be a good thing. No, you're not wrong. Um, uh, lastly then, thinking about then what's, what's going to be keeping you busy, there's obviously the, the um, a Victorian Mental Health um, yep. project that uh, will be high priority. But uh, as, as the platform continues to evolve, and I guess the breadth of that customer base and the types of patients going through the platform, where, where's this thing evolving to? What's exciting about the future? I, I Look, I personally have always regional Victorian girl, so yeah. my focus has always been on those regional yeah. communities. And so I think that there are other states that have got the same problems we have in Victoria, but on a much larger scale. I recently went to a, um, an event in WA and the WA Country Health Network um, representative was talking about the, the tyranny of distance that they've got, which is just astronomical compared the to country. <laughs> <laughs> and the, nu- the number of people that they deal with. But they've been doing telehealth for 25 years. Yeah. I thought we were doing this a long time before we mm. really got onto it very well in Victoria, at least. Mm. So I think that, um, that some of the work that we've done in Victoria can absolutely be applied in WA, in Northern Territory, in Queensland, where you've got those big distances. And once you've got, I think, the, the systems and the, the technology to to manage those patients, then it's about clinical governance. So they can work up the clinical governance models, who's going to monitor the patients, who's your ultimately responsible, what does your escalation profile look like and who are the people that are going to support all of that and your chief medical officer needs to be on board and all those sorts of things. But I think once you've got that clinical governance model, you, the, putting in the technology is probably not the hard part. Yeah. 
I think I think it applies everywhere. Yeah. But I'll always advocate for it being regional Victoria. Regional <laughs> Australians. <laughs>